Hello, welcome. Neil at uh, writinghorses.com. Uh, Hope you well. Um, today um, I'm going to um, enclose a quick um, video explaining the new data available to all members. Um, we've had a few technical difficulties from time to time, but we've slowly got on top of them and um, we're happy that we can bring you um, some new data um, concerning the actual horse's performance uh, throughout its lifetime, which can be key at certain tracks. Um, so I'm just going to go through a quick um, video with you explaining what the criteria are and how it can help you um, moving forwards in your selection process. So in front of us, we've got today's uh, spreadsheet. And if we scroll to the right, and please excuse me, my hay fever is still terrible. I'm sat right next to a bunch of flowers as well, which is not helping. <coughs> excuse me. Um, we scroll through past the official ratings onto what where would be, as you know, the 14 day stats for the trainer and the jockey. Now, right next to that now, just after the official ratings, we've got the lifetime horse stats. So what are these? What do they mean? Well, it's quite self-explanatory. These, this data here concerns um, the lifetime horse stats. So the more um, horses, sorry, the more races the horse has been involved with, um, the more data there will be. For example, here in the 145 at Epsom, we can see that we've got a small field here. We've got a five-year-old, a six, couple of six-year-olds, an eight-year-old, and Duke of Forenzi, one of my favorite horses, I must add, um, a 12-year-old. So, of course, you can expect Duke of Forenzi as, as far more data um, moving forwards. And that is the case if you look, look here. So the first couple of columns are the course strike rate and the course win percentage. That basically means um, Duke of Forenzi, we can see, has never won at the course from five runs. Okay, so Duke of Forenzi has run at Epsom five, on five occasions, has never won. Um, we can see... Uh, because Epsom is one of those tracks, you don't tend to have too many meetings at Epsom. Um, Recon Mission has had the one run and has not won at the track. And can, we can see the dark shot. Excuse me, I'm just wiping my nose for the 500th time today. Um, the course strike rate for dark shot is no wins from four runs. And there you can see no percent strike rate. Um, the distance is similar in the fact that we've got the distance strike rate and the distance win percentage. Now you can see that today's distance is over the sprint of five furlongs. We can see that Duke of Forenzi has won on six occasions from 64 runs at today's distance. So just a 9% win strike rate. If we look at Militia, if I'd say we'd say, I'm trying to... It's all right. I've got my eyes are watering with my A fever. I'm just trying to make sure, <laughs> make sure I've I've got the right horse. Militia um, as um, six wins from twenty one runs over today's distance of five furlongs, and you can see their distance five furlongs. Um, so that means Militia has got a twenty nine percent strike rate at today's distance. Um, and again, we go to the going, going strike rate and going percentage. Now, we have to be careful here. Uh, we can see that the going for Epsom is good. Now, this is, of course, when the ratings were collated on uh, what would be Monday evening around 7 p.m. You must need to check what the current conditions are. Of course, during the summer, it very rarely changes, uh, spring, summer months. It's in the winter um, 
or during maybe the latter end of the autumn when we may get heavy rainfall or thunderstorms. So um, the ground of good could change to good to soft or maybe even soft. So that is up to you. You must check that. But at the time that ratings were collated, the going was good. And we can see the Duke of Frenzy has won once from 20 runs on good ground. Uh, Spoof has a 38% strike rate on today's ground of good. Uh, three wins from eight. Okay, so you can probably already see that th this is great additional content. Um, I think this sort of content will come more into its own at unique tracks such as Epsom, uh, Brighton, um, maybe Aintree over the Grand National Course, that sort of thing. So the run of the, I mean, every track is different. It doesn't matter if it's completely flat, it's undulating, um, twists and turns, um, oval, you know, horses act better at certain tracks like they do act better on certain ground conditions and certain distances okay um so it is a great additional um, piece of information so what i'm going to do is i'm going to concentrate on epsom and epsom is not one of my favorite tracks it's it's similar to chester um brighter and those sort of places although we do tend to do I, I do to tend to do well at brighton but i do think you know horses can come with a fantastic record be a top quality animal and you get them on the uh, the twists and turns and undulating course of epsom and the form goes completely out the window they just can't act on the on on the course um, so i'm going to Scroll down to, oh, I'm quite happy with that one to be honest with you, the 250 at Epsom. And I won't babble on for too long because time is just past 10 past 12. And if we do find something of, uh, of note, then obviously we want to be placing um, a small bet. So 250 at Epsom, as I say, not one of my favourite tracks, even if there's something that stands out to me here, it will be a small... Um, investment excuse me and um, we can see that the top rated horse is sky defender uh, victory chime as 18 and then there's a little bit of a gap in the ratings there haravian sarvan man of the night blue cap sorry blue cup uh, good birthday uh, ducky scrove celtic heart and alfred Bacher. Um not an awful lot between third and, and and the bottom horse is there but unless something really sticks out with these bottom two or three we'll probably dismiss um but on the ratings we can see that the top two are a little bit clear of the rest of the field now of course one thing we have to be careful with is is at this time of year when the, the flat turf has just started that some horses may not have run for quite some time now that may well be a positive some horses you know run well after a layoff and we can see here that haravian hasn't run for 255 days but last time out at the start of last season it came second so it tends to hit the 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 the, the it, it, it tends to you know start well um my brain my brain has gone blank the word i'm looking for will not come to my forehead um Hit the ground running is what I tried to say. Um, it comes second um, first time out, then it came first. And it's, you see, it's been in good form last season. Um, so let's scroll across to the key data. We can see actually that the top two rated are the only two horses that have won over the course and distance. And I say, at tracks like Epsom, that is very, very key. We could have a number of horses here that have done well over the distance. Um, but may well not act well over the course um, so we can scroll across and we've now got access to that data we can see that the OF strategy that that's the trend seems to continue with Sky Defender and Victory Charm being first and second 
Alfred Boucher, the bottom rated horse, is actually third rated and Good Birthday um, is fourth rated on the OFS. And the speed, Alfred Boucher is top. Uh, we then have Victory Charm, Chime, uh, Blue Cup and Sky Defender. And the power ratings are similar again with 64 for top rated to Sky Defender. Then we have Victory Chime at 60. And then the third rated horse is Alfred Boucher. But this is key. Although it's third rated on the power rating, we can see it is 37 behind Victory Chime. So although this has got key data, it may well be one of these horses that, um, well, we'll have to wait and see. I was going to say one of these horses that may well do well at the certain specifics of the new criteria. But we obviously know that it's not a course and distance winner. Um, but we'll we'll scroll across and we'll see what sort of angles we can find there. But really, it looks like any potential bets will revolve around these top two horses that seem to come out well um, on our ratings. Sky Defender, we can see, uh, was off a mark of 104 six runs ago and has just dropped up a, a, a pound uh, last time out. However, we can see that it's never worn off a handicap mark as high as this in the past with its highest mark 99. So that is five pounds higher today than it has ever won, a, won off. Uh, Victory Charms off a mark of 98 that has steadily climbed up the handicap due to recent good um, runs again. But we can see that 91 is the highest mark that Victory Chime has ever won off and it's off 98 today. Uh, Halavian, 101 today, uh, started off a mark of £10 lower six runs ago. Um, we do know the horse does seem to perform well after a layoff. Um, but again, it's £5 higher than it's ever won off in the past. I'll quickly go down to a few others where the, the there's a bit of key criteria with the others. Blue Cup, um, it's off a mark of £79 uh, three runs ago. But he's now £14 higher. Um, so obviously question marks about that. Um, good Birthday is now um, £9 lower than it was six runs ago. But as you can see, very, very poor form. And Alfred Boucher um, is £1 lower than it was off six runs ago. Um, but as you can see again, the highest this horse has ever run off on a, in a handicap is 82 so five pounds higher uh, so it's a bit of a mishmash um, but the, the content does seem to have brought in maybe Haravian uh, for the simple reason it's ran off 102 101 two runs ago and it finished second off 101 which is today's mark but again question marks there because it's still five pound higher uh, but of course one of them's got to win, so it's just about trying to match the criteria. So I'll, I'll dismiss the Lifetown stats for now for the horse, and we'll go to the 14-day stats. We can see that Mark Johnston's um, got a 70% RTF. Now, RTF, of course, rem rem remember, is um, a figure given by the Racing Post. Uh, which means that 70% of its runners in the last 14 days are considered to have run to form or better. Um, and from those 56 runners in the last 14 days, 12 have won. So it gives them a 21% strike rate. Uh, Haravian, John and Thady Gosden has had 12 winners from 51 in the last 14 days. So around quarter of their horses have won. And we can see that 59% of those have considered to have run to form uh, or better um, if we scroll down to blue cup two winners from nine for david mansur uh, andrea balding six from 33 alfred bout here hannah candy um, no winners from eight in the last 14 days so not that many runners in the last 14 days works out probably just over one runner every other day um jockey form Frankie Dittori, four winners from 13, 31%. Sean Levy, nine from 35. Ryan Moore, nine from 38. And uh, Frankie, you know, I mentioned Frankie Dittori, four from 13. So 
you know, I'm all siding more towards Haravian, but of course there is a lot of question marks in the fact that, you know, the power rating is very poor. Um, on the official writing sort of thing, obviously there's quite a number that have got negatives. Haravian has got a negative, probably less, less so than a few others. Um, Trainer is, is in good form. Jockey's been in good form. First time out. Um, so let's go and have a look at the key uh, lifetime stats for the horse. Well, top rated Sky Defender, we can see, is a course and distance winner. And that is um, marked off by this green tick here. So we know automatically that the horse has won over course and distance. What is interesting is that it's only ran once at Epsom. And in that, that was the time that it, it, uh, it won. And that is the same for Victory Chime. So although it's a course and distance winner, obviously it'd be preferable if it had been, it had won three out of the last four or five, but it's only had the one run at Epsom and uh, both times those top two have won their races. There's no other key data um, for the course. Um, so none of these other runners in this race um, have run at Epsom. So we've got no information there and of course, Epsom, as I said, is it a unique track? Um, what may suit one may not suit another, and, and Epsom is a little bit like that. As we look at the distance, we can see that Sky Defender has had three winners from 21 over good on good ground, which which is is okay, it's not great. But we can see here the victory chime has seven winners from 14 on good ground. So his preference is obviously this sort of ground, and that's what it's got today. Um, Haravian, three winners from 10. Uh, moving down, Blue Cup, one from two. And Duckett's Grove, two from three. So there's quite a few that, you know, pref looks like they prefer the good ground. Distance-wise, um, Sky Defender, two winners from 10 over the today's one mile two. Uh, we can see the Victory Chime seems to do well at this sort of uh, trip. Um, with four winners from nine, 44% strike rate. Uh, and then we've got a couple at 20% for Good Birthday in Duckett's Grove over the distance. So um, there's, there's a few positives with Blue Cup, um, but there's also a few um, negatives. And, and all in all, if you look at the bigger picture, um, although I was siding towards Haravian, a little bit because mainly because of the the good um, form of the trainer it is a distance winner yes it's been off for 250 odd days but it, it does run well fresh it has got negatives a negative OFS and the six power rating horse which okay six of ten um, but it's such a poor score um, so that is one of the reasons that I will probably dismiss Haravian there's a couple of reasons I'd maybe consider the likes of Blue Cup. Um, but we can't get away from these two here. We've got a great power rating of 64 and 60. And out of those two, um, Victory Chime um, seems to do well at the distance and at the ground. And certainly better than the, the top rated or Sky Defender. So um, for this... Um, example I'm going to make a note of victory choi um, uh, trainer Ralph Beckett two winners from 13 um, yep yeah, I'm quite happy with that the only question we've got now is do we get value and that's where of course a lot of your um, selection pros process may go out the window because I know I drum it into you, but the only way you'll win long term is to find that edge on the bookmaker. So can we find the value? Well, we can see the victory chime. Our odds suggest for this horse to offer some sort of value, it needs to be around three to one. So anything above three to one, we consider to be value. So if it was something that appealed on your selection process, whatever criteria or whatever method you used, if you come to victory chime as, as the likely horse to back in this race we can see that the horse um, our odds suggest this horse needs to be around three to one 
um, which is 3.97 uh, decimal. And we can see that when the ratings were collated on Monday evening, that the forecast price was eight to one. So of course, obviously, obviously offering um, very good value. Um, so let's go over and see what sort of price we can get um, now. 250 at Epsom. So interesting at first glance, if you can scroll down, we can see that a couple of mentions of Good Birthday and Blue Cup there's been money for. Uh, Haravian is 13 to 2. Um, Sky Defender, which is top rated 10 to 1. And Victory Chime is 11 to 1, 10 to 1 across the board. So, there's obviously a big positive and there's a big negative here. And it, it depends on if you think that the price outweighs the negativity of the horse drifting so let's remind ourselves that taking into all key data we can see that victory chime our odds suggest this horse to offer value should be around three to one or bigger it opened at eight to one on monday evening when the ratings were collated and this horse has continued um, to drift uh, up until a couple of hours before the race is due off to 11 to one so there's obviously not an awful lot of confidence um, behind this or so let's go quickly back to the ratings so let's let's go through this again so it's second rated horse it's over one mile two so there's no draw bias um, there um, finished last season well, finishing first and second. And we can see previously that it was off a mark of 91. It won and then it was put up to 97. And it comes second um, and then it was put up nine to uh, 98. And it's off the same mark of 98 today. It's had a prep run 14 days ago. Um, we can see. It's a course and distance winner. All in all, it's for me, the old picture, it looks like the best thing in the race. It offers value. I'm not a great lover of Epsom. So my recommendation here would be a small each way bet uh, and watch the race with interest. So 250 at Epsom, victory chime. I hope the additional horse data will be a, a, a fantastic bonus for you i think it'll be um well received by you and uh, we'll be adding more information um one of the things i want to add is beaten favorite column so i'll leave it there babbled on long enough thank you for listening uh, and good luck if you're having a bet today and especially if you're having a bit at epsom horrific racing at epsom uh, not my favorite track at all all the best. Speak soon.